What's your game? My game at the casino. Craps. All right, Me all right, too. that's good. Yeah, I love that's craps. Good. By the way, big on craps. She can't stop winning. I was on a bunch <laughs> of shrooms. I don't even remember it. <laughs> really? And then I woke up with a bunch Best of money time, in my know? hands. I, was, yeah. I, I did the you know uh, craps on quay. was my thing, you know. And I was really good at it, like the whole thing. And I had, so I had like a year and a half where I didn't lose. I won by three or four million dollars, right? Oh, I all right, guys. If you're listening to this podcast, we know you like to have a good time, and you do that with P Dubs. P Dubs, baby. And guess what it is? It's a 10 percent ABV malt, malt beverage, beverage, ready to go Total. in a can. Two fifty nine. If you go get it in Austin, one fifty nine. One fifty nine. And it's a tall boy. How could I be so silly? You saving yourself a dollar from what I just said. Yes, I know. Save and yourself some money. Drink some pirate water. Have fun. Get fucked up responsibly, and just have a good time. It's cheap for the college kids. And how many flavors are there? There's four. four. Miami, Miami Vice, Vice, Bahama Mama, Sex on the Beach, and a Margarita. Yeah, so if you want to have a good time, do it with Pirate Water. Make sure to check it out. You can go to drinkpiratewater.com or you can order it now on GoPuff. Let's get into the episode. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Plan Bree Uncut. We have a very unexpected <laughs> special guest on Plan Bree Uncut. We have Jordan Belfort in the building. What's up? In the house. In the, the house. Wolf is in the house. The How you guys doing? That was good. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I uh, know. It's kind of random, I feel like, for you, but I think it's a perfect fit and kind of good for you to come on our podcast because yeah. we uh, our demographic is like very Gen Z. Don't know what to do with their money. Right. Bad mm-hmm. at investing. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. think we could use a lot of your advice. <laughs> so that's exactly why I wrote this book. So I had a copy for you, The Wolf of yes. Investing, which I'm going to give you all. Give my my Bible. Sign Thank in, you very right? much. I need that. Yeah, right. So, so I think here's the thing. I think the biggest mistake, and I wish I would have done this when I was your age, mm-hmm. right? Um, is that. People will say, well, I don't have that much money to start with, right? Maybe I have 5,000 or 10,000, whatever the number is, right? Yeah. And and because of that, you know, to make any real money, I have to have some huge return. Like I got to find the next great crypto deal or mm. the next Apple computer or whatever. Mm. So like you, yeah. think you have to get 10 times your money to, to really get anywhere because you don't have a huge amount of money to start when you're young, right? But that is completely not true. It's like the opposite of the truth. The fact is, is that the best time you you have to start right now. So if you're in your 20s right now, in your 30s, my God, like it's like the strategies I lay out in the book. These are proven strategies. Now it's not about short term trading mm-hmm. or timing the market. Right? Mm-hmm. It's about doing something very different. It's about engaging in long term investing. Right? Not mm-hmm. trading in and out. Okay. And allowing the market itself to do the heavy time to do the heavy lifting for you. So in other words, you want to be buying the best companies in America, right? And, and all at once in, mm-hmm. by, in an index. It's called the S&P 500. Okay. It's part of the strategy, right? And you could start off with a small amount of money. Let's say, say $10,000, right? Mm-hmm. And then add, let's say, $50, $100 a month, hopefully more, right? Over time, mm-hmm. as you get old, you keep adding more and more. You'll, believe it or not, when you're ready to retire, you'll have millions and millions of dollars waiting for you. Just yeah. because of the way the market works with long-term compounding. And again, mm-hmm. while nothing's guaranteed, over the last 150 years, this has been like literally, if you any time in the last 150 years, that you would end up in millions of dollars. And 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 if you start now, and mm-hmm. some of you probably make a lot of money, right? And and put more than that in, you, I mean, you could make tens of millions of dollars. But yeah. what you can't do is try to like listen to Jim Cramer or the latest tip you hear at the office water cooler or online, some, some, some charlatan on TikTok, buy these four stocks or these three tokens are going to moon is freaking nonsense. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and I wrote this book. So my own family got caught up in this, a very successful brother-in-law mm-hmm. makes a lot of money mm-hmm. and he, and he's taking his savings. He's getting whipsawed by trying to short this stock and buy Tesla and, 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 you know, um, sell Facebook or meta, right. And buy a token here and an NFT there. And you know, listen, it's almost impossible to beat the overall stock market okay. by doing that. So it's so simple. You don't have to even think about it. You, there's a certain type of account you open up and you want to have some tax-free accounts in there as well, right? And then make a couple of trades and just set it and forget it. And then just add a little bit and you're golden. You're going to like have millions or tens of millions waiting for you when you're ready to re- kick back and not retire, you'll be in your 50s. You know, who wants to retire yeah. then, right? That's, you make it sound sounds, easy. Yeah, you make it sound so less um, intimidating. I think people don't know where to start because it's so scary and it's like a world that they don't know anything about. Big words and they're like, what the hell? But you make it seem a lot less intimidating. Let, let me give you another, this is a great analogy, everyone, right? So the problem with, with, with investing is that people overcomplicate it. Mm-hmm. And to that end, they also think because it's so inherently complicated, I need to hire an expert. Yeah. To manage my money, mm-hmm. right? And the reason we think that is because it's it's correct in all other things outside of Wall Street. So, for example, let's say um, 
you're, you're sick and you, you have a stomach ache, it turns out your appendix is about to burst, right? Well, I would suggest you get a doctor, a surgeon, to take out your appendix. Don't do it yourself. We'll let your husband or wife do it, right? You probably yes. want to avoid it's a good that. Call. You're gonna yeah. go and ex- go, you're gonna seek out an expert. You're gonna get yes. the best result by an expert, trained physician, take out your appendix, you're gonna do well, right? Mm. If your pipes burst in your house and your water's flooding your, your floor, house is a mess, you probably should go hire a licensed expert plumber mm-hmm. to fix your pipes, and you're gonna do a lot better off by hiring that expert than trying to fix your own pipes. Yeah. Yeah. If you have dad. electric short somewhere in your house, your lights are blinking or not working at all, go hire an electrician who's an expert at that mm-hmm. and have them fix your electricity versus you doing it yourself and probably getting electrocuted, right? Yeah. So with all those things, whether it's hiring a lawyer if you have problems with legal problems or you're looking to do a contract, you're going to get a lot better result by having a lawyer review it or, sign, or develop your contract. Um, if you're going to do your taxes and they're complex, get an accountant and you're going to do really well there. The one exception to the rule of seeking out experts is investing. Wall okay. Street. When you hire an expert on Wall Street, you do worse Really? Not better, yes. To see when you seek out a professional money manager, this is proven mathematically, historically. You don't need an expert to manage your money for you. In fact, you're going to end up much worse. Why? Two things. Number one, all the fees, commissions, and performance bonuses that they charge. Mm. That's number one, which dramatically impact your returns each year, right? And second, they can't beat the market. Like they can't do better than simply just buying. The S and P five hundred themselves, like you, you can't, the market is so difficult to beat, mm-hmm. right? It's just that's the way because it's, it's there's so much information out there. Everyone gets it at the same time, unless you have inside information, which is illegal. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know, you, if you watch billions, mm-hmm. see they're always trying to get inside information, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, or if you have like let's say you're Goldman Sachs, you have lightning fast computers on the floor of the exchange that are. To, you know, freak, high frequency training that you're, you're timing the market by a, a millionth of a second ahead of everyone else. Yeah, you can do well like that, but mm. you don't have that. I don't have that, right? Mm-hmm. And who, who listening has that, right? Mm-hmm. You're an average investor. You're just getting started. If you give your money to a mutual fund or a hedge fund or someone to manage, they're not going to even match the return you can get yourself by putting your money to a specific type of investment, S&P 500 with no fees, reinvest your dividends every quarter, add a little bit and you're going to be golden. Mm. You're going to be golden when you're ready to retire. And along the way, you could also pull some out, but you want to really let it compound for the long term. So that's the sort of stuff I, I talk about in the book. And it's really how you go about doing that, how you open the accounts, why it works so well. And also, I show you how to speculate. Because if you want to have fun, because mm. yeah. the market's fun. Like yeah. I know Dave, boy, loves to speculate, right? Yeah. yeah. Great, right. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. But that's speculation. That's not investing. Mm-hmm. Speculation is like, you know, you take 5% of your capital mm-hmm. and have some fun and try to make money, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Well, you might not. You're probably not going to make money. Maybe you will. Yeah. But I show you really great strategies for that as well. But the key is to be disciplined and not to have 85% of your money engaged in speculation because yeah. you're going to end mm-hmm. up getting destroyed more often yeah. than not. Hey guys, uh, it's the holiday season, so we want to talk to you about Etsy. If you're like me, you're like Grace, you're on a mission to find handcrafted, affordable gifts from independent sellers, which is the best because they're meaningful. And sometimes, you know, we're not that crafty. Listen, Mm -hmm. these are the best gifts to get for your aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers, cousins. Did I already say aunts? Get a second one for your aunt. Anyone. (laughs) Dude, and there's like literally Etsy, anything that you can think of is on there from ho- custom home pieces like cutting boards, linens, throw pillows, your favorite holiday hosts, purses, necklaces, seasonal jackets, literally anything that you want, Etsy has it. I actually, I just bought a funny thing on Etsy. What did you buy? Um, uh, It didn't come in time. I was going to wear it on Halloween. Uh, I, it's, I typed in Zach Bryan Halloween shirt <laughs> and it says Zach Bryan's pumpkins and it's two pumpkins for your tits. Oh my God. It was just a joke. That's but it hilarious. It didn't come in time because I ordered it too late, but you could get anything on Etsy. See, you literally typed in something so silly and, and it, it was there. Up. Yeah, there was plenty of things to Etsy. pick from. So uh, if you're new to Etsy, you can use the code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. That's code HOLIDAY10. Maximum discount value of $50 expires December 31st, 2023. You can see terms at Etsy.com slash terms for handcrafted and affordable gifts for everyone on your list etsy has it so shop etsy.com let's get back to the episode yeah Gambling. scammed yeah i get yeah. scammed a get lot scammed. yeah she really scammed. I, I, I will i am like prone me, to getting scammed, get scammed. Like, i just throw my money anywhere throw, someone tells you like you see on, on tiktok these three coins are yep. about to yeah, 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 yeah scammed yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i did yeah, i wasn't doing so the last, one point. i'll tell you what i say about those <laughs> the last chapter of my book okay you want to know the title you're gonna love the title i can't wait meet the fuckers oh, oh, that's me. i like that like not the fuckers meet <laughs> yeah, the fuckers. Meet the fuckers. Right? I like that. so these are all the people who try to fuck you over yeah. okay? okay and separate you from your money so it's like i go through mm. one by one because you don't need these people like yeah. jim kramer on cnbc this mm-hmm. guy is like killed more people's portfolios than like in world war ii i mean this guy 
you know, oh, shit. And, no, because he's like, listen, and he's not a bad guy. He's smart. He knows yeah. his shit. But you can't make money. It's like close to impossible to time the market as an average investor. Like, okay, I'm going to start buying Meta today because I think Meta's earnings going to be good next quarter. And then I'm going to switch from that into oil because I think the oil market's going up. But then I'm going to go back into Bitcoin because I think the economy's going to get you. This is impossible for the average person to do. No mm. one, I mean, like one in a million makes money like that. Yeah. The opposite way to do it is to, like I said, let time do the heavy lifting. In other words, so you invest in a high quality index, which mm -hmm. is the S&P 500. And you're gonna mm -hmm. wanna do a couple of other investments as well, but that's the chief one, right? In a certain type of account, you wanna have tax-free accounts, whatever possible. So you're gonna wanna open up certain types of accounts and it's so easy to do, by the way. You probably yeah. already have them, okay? Like where they're charity? 401ks. What's it? No, 401ks oh, or, oh. or, or um, <laughs> your IRA or Roth IRA. Yeah, it's so it. simple to do. Okay. So I explain how to do that as well, right? And then like just guide. like literally, yeah. you know, and you rely on the overall strength of the U.S. economy, mm -hmm. right? So let me let me put it this way. Wall Street's like a two-headed monster, right? Okay. Wall Street creates massive value. They do. And they're mission critical to the functioning of the U.S. economy. We need Wall Street. We mm -hmm. need Goldman Sachs. We need Morgan Stanley. We need these giant firms that take companies public, maintain the credit markets, the debt markets. We need them, right? And they create massive value, right? Mm -hmm. That's the good side of Wall Street. Then there's the not so useful side, which is where they create bubbles, where they rip people's eyeballs out with extra fees, commissions, continue mm. to trade for the short term. Mm. And they essentially, like, you know, make massive amounts of money for themselves and destroy everyone else around them. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. the not so useful side. So the mm. question is, as an average investor, young investor, like you're all probably very young, right? How do you essentially get maximum exposure to all the great stuff Wall Street does? Mm but not get caught up with going into that corrupt casino where they get you to trade for the short term and try to time the market, right? And they get you fees and commissions, right? Here's the, here's the equivalent of a casino, right? So when you go to a casino, right? The odds are against you. Mm. That's how the casino makes money. In a legitimate, honestly run casino, right? You're behind 5%, 6%, depending on what game you play, right? Mm. What's your game? My game? At the casino. Craps. All right, Me all right, too. that's good. Yeah, I love that's craps. Good. By the way, big on craps. She can't stop winning. I was on a bunch <laughs> of shrooms. I don't even remember it. <laughs> really? And then I woke up with a bunch Best of money time, in my hands. I, yeah. I, I did the you know uh, craps on quaaludes. Was my thing, you know. And I was really good at it, like the whole thing. And I had, so I had like a year and a half where I didn't lose. I won by three or four million dollars, right? Oh, I didn't say and I was in some little <laughs> shitty casino. I was in some little shitty casino somewhere Reno? in St. Martin. Oh. Yeah. Uh. And I <laughs> lost like fifty dollars, and I had lost for a year. It was like broke the streak, and that, I couldn't win again, right? So anyway, but but um, when you go into a, a legit casino. You know, mm -hmm. it's they're not stealing your money, but the odds are stacked against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then if you go into a corrupt casino where the dice are loaded and they're dealing from the bottom of the deck, well, guess what? Right. Then you're going to get destroyed because not only the odds inherently stacked against you, but they're cheating you as well. Mm -hmm. That's Wall Street is like the, the deck is not only stacked against you, but they're then cheating you as well by front running you, mm -hmm. getting be better executions, convincing you to do things you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. So the the, the goal here for the young investor, especially, is like, is that you want to be out there and getting exposure to the massive value that Wall Street creates. That is in finding great companies to take public, maintaining them, providing credit. So like companies like Meta, like Google, right? Mm -hmm. Like NVIDIA, like the artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. all of those companies. But to say which ones are going to be good, which ones are going to be bad, which ones are going up or down, if you try to pick them one at a time, it's overwhelming and impossible, you're, you're gonna lose. Mm -hmm. So the way you avoid that is by just buying them all in mm -hmm. one basket, okay? Okay, And that's one trade you can do, and you buy the S&P 500, and it costs you almost nothing, zero. They're, mm -hmm. they're zero low, I mean, there's no sales fees, no commissions, they don't pay performance bonuses to a money manager, why? Because they're not managing anything, they're just buying the whole stock market. Mm -hmm. So now what you're really doing is you're having exposure to the 500 biggest, baddest, best companies in the United States that do probably 40 or even 50% of their business overseas. They're big companies. They do business mm -hmm. all the so you have exposure to the world economy as well. So by this one trade, right? You're like sitting on easy street with the best companies out there. And then every three months, the committee that runs this, this index, the S&P index, will say, mm, this company's not doing well. We're gonna remove it and put a better company in. Mm -hmm. And they so they change out. So they do all of this for you. Oh, huh. sick. So in any given year, this like for instance, now in, in 2023, right? It's a very different group of 500 companies than in 1993 or 2000. Yeah. They changed them, right? Yeah. But you don't have to worry about that. And once they make those changes, every all the big funds have to match it, mirror it, right? Mm -hmm. So all the money goes pouring back into those 
stocks. You own them automatically and you don't have to pay taxes by buying and selling. So there's no taxes you're paying on. There's very little, right? Mm -hmm. So it's tax efficient. It's time efficient. And you go back any time in history. And if you just do this and hold it for a long period of time, not a year or two. It's not, it's not about a year mm -hmm. or two, right? Yeah. And, and so you, you you need to change your perspective, everyone. Change your perspective. You're very all very young. Right? Everyone's young? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe there's one old person like me listening to it, right? Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone can do it. Right? No, but so at this point in your lives, it is like, like it, this is the gift. It's like the golden ticket. The ticket. The ticket. No, it really is. It really yeah. is. To, to, to If you follow the advice I give you in this book, all right, I promise you, and you it, it's inarguably correct. You cannot mm. end up, unless the world goes to shit forever and then we have bigger problems. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's not about your portfolio because like there's nuclear bombs flying and everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the US economy is incredibly resilient. Um, and as many problems as we have as a country, is we're the best bad option out there. Mm. And that doesn't matter because the companies keep ch getting changed out anyway over time. So you'll always have the best companies. And when you're ready to retire, you'll have you know millions, if not tens of millions of dollars waiting for you. Do whatever the fuck you want with. Pretty sick. That's, that's how you should invest. Yeah, that's worth Seems getting. Like the wolf older. of investing. Yeah. So the wolf of investing is not like short term trading. The wolf of investing is being a very clever wolf and just sort of take, snatching all the value out of Wall Street and not getting caught up in their shenanigans. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very smart. I'm, I'm so excited to read it. Yeah, no, I know. Me too. <laughs> and I, I need funny. this. The book's hysterical. <laughs> it is. Do you talk about your personal life at all? Or yeah, is it, of course. So it's yeah. all, I mean, it's, it's all stories in my family. And um, it's just very fun. The book is very fun. Like, here's what was the challenge when I started writing the book. So I could have written the book in, in two weeks because like, I knew the strategies. Mm -hmm. But I said, if the problem is this stuff is so boring yeah. Yeah. and dry. And if I just write a book and explain, this is what you do, no one's going to read it or they'll read two words and stop. So I said, how do I make this book laugh out loud funny and like irreverent, mm. like totally irreverent, yeah. right? You know, where, where people are just dying as they're reading it. Mm. And that's what took me a year and a half to do. So okay. it's, it starts off, the book starts off with the story of my own, my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law, whose name, her name is Gordita. So she's, mm -hmm. my wife is Argentinian, right? Mm -hmm. So Gordita is, is um, means little fat girl, right? In Spanish, right? Okay. But my little Gordita is actually a hundred pounds dripping wet. She's beautiful, <laughs> blonde, right? But Gordita and her husband, Fernando, right? Um, basically lost almost their entire portfolio by trying to time the market, oh, right? Yeah. And she's hysterical, by the way, because she's like this really so smart, and like he's like a, a successful businessman. And she's like, what the hell is wrong with me? Like, <laughs> like, you know, like you know, she's like uh, giving wifely advice after the fact. Like, are you yeah. an idiot? What's wrong with you, right? <laughs> so I'm like sitting there trying to review his portfolio. It was like a crime scene, like so much blood and red ink, right, <laughs> on this portfolio. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm shocked. I'm like, you know, what the hell? And then I went about, and they didn't speak English. Mm. And so my uh, wife is bilingual. Yeah. I, I speak Spanish, but not well enough to teach in Spanish, yeah. right? So my wife is the trans, this is the scene with the four of us there over dinner. It's the funniest thing you ever seen. Like, so you're laughing your ass off about yeah. Gordita and she's ready to kill her husband, right? And he's like, well, what did I do? So I make a lot of money, I lost some money, you know, like it's just pretty funny. So that's how it starts. And then it goes into a, a history of Wall Street, but in a really funny, like really funny way where you get to see how things ended up so screwed up as they are today. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and along the way, you get this deep understanding of how the market works. And also you guys are all your business people, you're, got, you're entrepreneurs. It mm -hmm. also gives you a lot of sense of entrepreneurship as well, of, you mm -hmm. know, of how businesses run, how they're built and how they ultimately end up going public. So you, you know, get to understand like, you know, wh where do these companies that are, you're, that are trading public, how do they, where do they come from? Mm -hmm. How are the shares issued? So, but you learn it all through these really funny stories, oh, wow. you know, and, and I know you'll be laughing when you read the book. I was yeah. laughing as I was wrote it, wrote, wrote it, you know? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's huge. That's exciting. Wait, talking about your family, does it ever get frustrating? Does everyone come to you for advice? Is it like always constant? What do I do? How do I do it? Yeah, so so I, I you know a lot of advice also for business like mm -hmm. in entrepreneurship and sales, and of course the stock market and um yeah and and, and by the way that's why like in the, it's funny you said that because like one of the um I think in the second chapter I'm like you know like for the, like my my in laws right they just want to like go what should we buy mm -hmm. and I'm like well here's the thing if you just tell someone just do this but don't explain the why mm -hmm. like why it really works why you can't do it another way. People won't take your advice. They have to understand the why, right? Mm -hmm. So in the book, I take a lot of time, you know, really unpacking and explaining in a very funny way why this type of investing is so powerful and so surefire. So you get a really good education on, you know, on finance, but like in the exact opposite way they try to teach you in school. Mm -hmm. This is where you're laughing your ass off as you're reading it and seeing yeah. the mistakes people make and how Wall Street tries to rip your eyeballs out. I mean, um, you're yeah, the fun teacher. It, what's that? You're like the fun teacher. I'm the fun teacher, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, let, let's take a class trip to like to the beach. And, like, yeah, you know, the right? one you actually learn from. It, exactly. You don't like to fall asleep. Exactly, yeah. 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 You know? It's huge. So, so I think I, I think that 
for, for young people, I'm telling you, it's a scary world, right? The world's like mm -hmm. on fire right now. And mm -hmm. it's so easy to get caught up in the shit. Like mm -hmm. they'll say, here's what, here's what like a, a person that didn't know how to invest correctly would say, I don't know if I should invest right now because you know, the world looks like it's gonna go to war and there's a huge debt, well, the debt and the Republicans take the Democrats, the Democrats take the Republican, there's global warming, you know? I get it. That's but that's all noise. Yeah. Like you don't. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow, right? I don't know if the stock market's going to go up, down, or sideways. No one does. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know where the market's going to be in three months from now or six months. But what I do know, with almost absolute certainty, is in fifteen or twenty years, it's going to be a lot higher because mm -hmm. it always has been over history, even after yeah. the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. So like that's you have to shift your focus here and not worry about. It. So you live your life, you make your money, yeah. You know as much as you can, yeah. right? But then the money that you make, the excess, just sock it away and like, and just let yeah, time do the magic for you. Yeah. And like you, and, and you know, you ever do this, this thought experiment, you just take, take a penny, right? Mm -hmm. And double it every day. You know yes, that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in 30 days, you're a millionaire, right? Mm -hmm. First time I heard it, I think I was 10 years old, maybe eight or 10 years old. And I was like, really? And I, and I started, I, I wrote it out one, two, four, right? Geometric progression, mm -hmm. right? And the interesting thing is if you do that, on day 21, you're still fucking broke. Yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Like you're like, wait a second. Day tw twenty one is I got I got four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. How is this gonna end well? Yeah, but then something magical happens between like, year twenty one and thirty. You end up with six million mm -hmm. or five million dollars. Right? That's called the late stage threshold mm -hmm. of compounding. In other words, so when you're investing for the long term and you're compounding each year, right? Me which means that the profits you make one year go into your account and then you. You're making money off of a larger base the next year. So it's like you start with 10,000 well, and you make 12%. Well, next year you have 11,200. When that goes up, it goes to 13, which then goes to 16. Then, so, but in the beginning, it seems to just like, well, whatever, not excited. But then suddenly, like through math, it's mathematical certainty, right? It just goes boom and shoots up, mm. rockets up mm. after 20 years. And then you start making these massive returns mm -hmm. without having invested a lot of money. The problem is, is that because it's 20 years out, most people, they just can't visualize it, wrap their head around it. They think, no, I got to make big returns today to get mm. rich in the future. Like instant gratification. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. if you were 60, I'd say, yeah, great. Well, you know, unfortunately, maybe it's a little bit more difficult, but you guys are young. You're yeah. all young. I mean, this is, if, if anyone does this, it's like, you're going to thank me. Hopefully I'll still be alive when you thank me, right? <laughs> but you're going to thank me because you're going to be sitting with like a massive nest egg when you're ready to retire. And it doesn't even take any time. It's like the simplest thing to do. Commercial break for Straight Talk. A new Straight Talk wireless offering is now available. So where you can get a Walmart Plus membership included on select Straight Talk wireless plans for free. So only Straight Talk wireless gives you unlimited data, talk and text, plus a Walmart Plus membership included on select plans for free. So Grace, want to hear some of the perks Walmart Plus membership has? Please, rid of them off. Okay, it's pretty cool. Free delivery on uh, from Walmart stores. Free shipping. No order minimum. Sick. Shipping is always like way too expensive for some Far reason. Far too much. Always. It always gets you. That adds the shipping and then it's fucked. Paramount Plus membership. No way. Yes. Everything's on Paramount Plus. I love I it. I love that. I know. And member prices on fuel. So you save a bunch of money on gas because gas prices are always going up. We're talking gas savings, baby. Yes. And it's like the best phone plan. So if you want to check it out, check out Straight Talk. You can do Straight Talk Wireless. It's available now at Walmart and Walmart.com. Let's get back to the show. Mm. Did you start investing young or you learned this throughout like your career? This didn't, it, you couldn't do this when I was young. Okay. Mm. The, the products didn't exist. So that's, that's, a, that, that's a very interesting, it's a good question, right? So up until um, like 1979, mm -hmm. right? 78, you could not buy the, the, all these stocks, the S&P, all 500 with one trade. Okay. You couldn't do it, it didn't exist. I also, sorry, just a question just came to my head. How do you, how do you buy this current day? Like I, I'm picturing, I'm pretty stupid that I walk to Wall Street and I and I go and I go ask for this this big old yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah I have no yeah. idea you're not you're <laughs> smarter than that I bet so it's very simple right and again of course I go through it in the book in detail mm -hmm. right it's like I I I I act as if people have like know nothing yeah like I'm I'm assuming in the book that you know nothing and you know, yeah um but the way I show it to you is through some really funny stories about people that might, might do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just like, it's been great, by the way. That was, that was a, my next book, right? So anyway, um, no. So what you do is now, now it's what I was, I was saying is back in, when I was younger, you couldn't go online mm -hmm. and open up an account on mm -hmm. a platform at a, at a bro, like you couldn't go to a Charles Schwab or a Vanguard or an E-Trade, whatever you couldn't do, it didn't exist, right? You needed a stockbroker or a, a financial uh, advisor to help mm -hmm. you do all this stuff. So it was very complicated. You couldn't buy all of these stocks in a tax efficient way with one trade. 
and you had to go into a mutual fund that paid that, that charged massive fees, right? And would basically rip your eyeballs out. They would get rich and you'd make these subpar returns. Mm -hmm. That was the way things were. All of that changed starting in the in the in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. But it was such a powerful idea that, that would make people, the average investor, so much money that Wall Street suppressed it. Mm -hmm. They literally went on a massive 20 year campaign to, to, to discredit this uh, idea oh, wow. that I'm giving you right now. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it was just too good of an idea mm -hmm. and it won out. And then it became, we can't beat them, join them. Mm -hmm. So all of Wall Street started adopting, offering people this type of philosophy, investment mm -hmm. philosophy. So it's out there now, easily available. You would go to any platform, Oh, and I give you the actual ticker symbols, the names, mm -hmm. how you do it. But it's so simple, okay? And not that I'm holding back. I mean, if you don't want to buy this, it's $20 for a book, right? If you can't afford that, then shame on you, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you don't want to invest in yourself, it's shame on you. But mm -hmm. it's just that uh, to, to tell you the names, it's just going to get, it's, too, it's information. It's in the book. Yeah. Got it, got okay, it. Just okay. It's in the book. It's simple. It's funny, funny as fucking hell, okay? <laughs> and it's going to give you like the retirement account uh, like of your dreams, right? So, um, so then what happened was over the years, it started first, then Wall Street, couldn't resist, this idea was too powerful and mm -hmm. it broke through. Mm -hmm. Now about 50, even more of the, of the entire world's assets are in these types of funds. Mm -hmm. These no, no commission, long-term index funds they're called, right? Mm -hmm. That's become very popular. But what they still do is they still try to convince you to play the sucker's game and trade short terms. So there's all this like TV channels and, and magazines that try to get you to continue to trade. You need to resist that stuff, mm -hmm. right? So. Then in 2000, the internet, as we, you know, modern internet, where, where bandwidths were, were fast enough and your know, platforms start to become, it became so simple that there was no need for middlemen anymore. Mm -hmm. You simply could go online to one of, you know, let's say one of five really solid houses, investment houses, okay. right? Open up an account in two seconds flat, very simple to do, enter your information all online, send a wire, or you, you, even through your, your phone app, you get to transfer whatever amount of savings you have in there. You buy, you check, I want to buy this index fund. And I show you exactly which ones to buy. And you can buy a couple, not just one. You buy two or three, depending on, on how old you are and how much money you have to invest, right? And you check a box that says reinvest my dividends. And then you start making it just a, your own. You could set it up automatically or you could just do it, you know, make it a point each month, set an alarm for yourself to every month, just put in whatever you could afford to put in and just forget about. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can forget about, right? Whether that's mm -hmm. 50, 100, 500, whatever that is each month, all right? And just... Let it work and then just sit back and don't worry about if it's down 8% when you don't, doesn't matter because the next year will be up 22%. So mm -hmm. it goes up, it goes down, but over the long term, it always goes up. And I mean, always, I mean, so historically, it always goes up over the long term, right? So by doing that, you set yourself up for a few things. Number one, you are going to be incredibly tax efficient mm -hmm. by opening up certain types of accounts. So you're not going to have mm -hmm. to pay taxes on any of this stuff until you're ready to retire, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, the stuff that you do pay taxes on will be minimized because you're in these types of funds that don't engage in trading. Every time you trade by yourself, if there's a profit, you pay a tax. Mm -hmm. So they start to, you, you get penalized right there. Mm -hmm. So by playing for the long term, you dramatically reduce any taxes that you'd have to pay. Okay. Right? And three, it's like you can just live your life and then spe if you want to take 5% of your money and speculate, yeah, that's that's very cool. And, mm -hmm. and that's fun mm -hmm. and it's empowering. And you might want to do that. Or maybe you say, yeah, I don't, it's not for me. I don't give a shit about that. I mm -hmm. just wanna I wanna have I wanna have millions when I'm ready to retire. Yeah. Right. And you could do that. So um, and then also along the way, let's say you like in five years you want to buy a house. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, then that's if that's one of your goals, and I go through sort of, you know, how you would work that goal into your financial plan. So then you could have a little bit of a you know, a separate instrument in there that will be kind of best serve, serve you in five years. So you, so you can also have nuances, but mm -hmm. generally speaking, it's so simple to invest in the stock market the right way. And that Wall Street spends a lot of money advertising you to convince you otherwise, yeah. Yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the secret. And it's mm. just that easy. Like one day when you're retired, you can just take your money out. Yeah. yeah. Well, you could take it out before you retire. There's nothing. If you, if you, in certain types of accounts, there's penalties of before you turn 59, okay. less, less if you want to, I think there's exemptions if you want for your first house, maybe, or if, you're, if there's um, um, health issues or something yeah, like yeah. that. But but um, but again, not all of your money should go into retirement accounts. Okay. You should have some of your regular accounts yeah. as well. Um, it won't compound quite as fast, but still it'll compound just the same mm -hmm. and give you millions of dollars as well, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to mix and match those depending on your, your own situation, right? Your mm -hmm. own financial situation. 
But ultimately, it really is that easy. Yeah. Like it really is that easy. Yeah. And then just one day when you're ready, and the idea is when you take it out and you're and you're older, your tax rate's gonna be lower. Mm -hmm. So you won't pay hardly any taxes. You get taxed when you take it out. But all the time that it was compounding, it was compounding tax free. Mm -hmm. So let's say I have a thousand dollars and I then I make a fifty percent return. That's fifteen hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say it's in a taxable account. We'll have to pay taxes on that five hundred dollars. Brings it back down to let's say. Um, fourteen hundred dollars, mm. twenty percent taxes if it's long term capital gains, mm. right? So fourteen hundred dollars. I lose a hundred dollars in taxes, right? Mm. But if I didn't sell, right, I wouldn't have to pay. Or if I was in a tax free account, I wouldn't have to pay that hundred dollars to the government. So I'm compounding with fifteen instead of fourteen. So I make even yeah. more money. That's mm. why tax free accounts, tax deferred accounts, are great for young young people especially, right? So I would urge you guys to definitely open up these types of accounts and they're very simple to do. Again, it's mm -hmm. all check a box, I want this type of account. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a broker, you don't need a financial planner. Now, if you do get to a certain point of wealth, right? It might make sense to hire a financial planner or advisor, but not to tell you what to buy. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that you're, you're, you're set up tax wise. Mm -hmm. The right way, so they have some use for that, making sure your your taxes and your insurance is structured correctly, right? But you don't. The last thing you want is someone saying, "Here, buy this stock, but go long this, go short." That's like a, a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Okay. It's like it's almost like gambling in a sense, like because when I was I was I tried to do the the buy, like quick buys stock market yeah. like back in like 2020, and I felt like I was gambling because I was trying to beat the system, but you can't beat the system. And it's just, it's a whole runaround if you're trying to do it quick. Yeah. So again, it's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's gambling, speculating, right? Um, you're, you're essentially trying to trade against people mm -hmm. who have faster computers than you, more up-to-date information than you. Mm -hmm. And even they can, can't beat the market, Yeah. generally speaking. Right? Even the best of the best, like, there's only a few people that can do it. And those people, by the way, are not going to take your money. Mm -hmm. like if you, there's a few hedge funds out there that really are amazing where they can return above the S and P. Right, there are mm -hmm. some, a few, right, very few, but there are some. But guess what? They're only investing their own money and a couple of ultra wealthy individuals. They're not taking the average person's money. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you do? So, how do you, you know? And then the rest of the funds, the mutual funds, they pretend to be great, like oh yeah, we're the hedge funds, but like there's only a few premier ones. They're not taking your money. The other ones kind of suck, mm -hmm. but they're still going to charge you the massive fees. Yeah. Right? You know, like a hedge fund will charge you 20% of the profits in any given year, none of the losses, and a 2% management fee. So watch. Let's say a, a fund is managing a billion dollars, mm -hmm. right? And they in that year, they return 15%. Mm -hmm. It seems pretty good, right? Um, but they're going to take, that means they'll make $150 million. They're going to carve out $20 million uh, 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 no, $30 million will be their share. Mm. And then they'll also charge you 2% of, of the top of the billion oh, wow. dollars. So, nothing, so you get it. So they all that goes against your return. So the customer's returns drop back down to like 10%. Oh, wow. Right? More or less, right? Um, and now watch this. The next year, the fund loses, has a losing year, which they have all the time, these funds, right? The fund loses 10%. Guess what? They charge you 100% of the loss that year. And then the fund resets on the first. And next year, if they make 20%, they, only, they take their full 20% hit on the, they don't absorb the losses. So it's like heads, they win, tails, you lose basically, mm, right? Yeah. So, so that's the hedge fund industry for you in a nutshell. And mutual funds aren't much better. And mm. meanwhile, they can't even beat this, the index, the S&P 500 index, because they're all trying so hard. And, and, you, and you explain this in the book, there's something called the efficient market theory, right? Mm -hmm. Which means the market is so efficient, so big and so efficient, all the info's out there. Unless you have inside info or unless you have some extra lightning fast computer that's short term trading ahead of everyone else, you just can't out guess the market. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. It's just too difficult, right? Yeah. So, so what do you do? Like, it's very simple. So, you're a young person, right? You're not an expert. You don't have the lightning fast computers, right? Or the inside info. It's very simple. You just you circumvent all this shit by extracting the massive value from the U.S. economy and the S. You just buy the S and P, you set it, you forget it, you don't trade, and you let long term compounding make you rich. Mm -hmm. Albert Einstein, you guys know Einstein, right? Yeah. yeah. He said, you know, he <laughs> compounding was the was the, I think the eighth wonder of the world. He called it. Mm. Those he, those who understand it are you know you know destined to be rich. Those who don't understand are, are doomed to pay it for the rest of their lives. Those mm. are on the ass end of it, like with credit cards and stuff, yeah. right? So, you know, compounding is just this ultra powerful thing 
And the only reason most people have difficulty wrapping their heads around it is because it doesn't have a short-term impact. It has yeah. a long-term impact. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, you're like, I don't know, that doesn't seem like it's going to make much of a difference, but it does. Mm -hmm. But 15, 20 years down the road. And for you guys, that's nothing. Yeah. I mean, how old are you? 24. You guys, and you? 24. 25. Babies. Yeah. Right? I have pants older than you guys. So, yeah, <laughs> no, my pants to hear. Right? <laughs> no, but, but in all seriousness, you guys are young. You just imagine, like, how great it would be to have like $8 million waiting for you in a retirement account yeah, when you're 50, yeah. 55. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, and you didn't have to think, like, you didn't have to think to do it. Just like, ah, you didn't think about it. Yeah. You didn't worry about where the economy goes. You didn't worry where this stuff. And every single person listening, if you follow the advice in this book, The Wolf of Investing, this is like, it's, it's like, there's no guarantees, but this is surefire advice based on history, based on math, mathematics, and anybody. I don't care if you spoke to Warren Buffett, any top investor, mm -hmm. they would tell you this is the best way to go because it is. Mm -hmm. And why do you why do you want to share it with like uh, the average the average Joe? Like this this idea of like using using this to get money in a long term sense of things. Like what made you want to write the book and share? This? Well, start with my with my um my own family mm -hmm. was getting whipped. So yeah, right? and then listen, I in the last you know twenty five years, I've you know been mentoring and people all over the world and how to be better entrepreneurs and, um, you know, better um, salespeople. And I will tell you that wherever I go in the world, like people come up to me every single day. I was at a book signing last night. Mm -hmm. And I would say about half of the, maybe a third of the people there were like, you changed my life. Mm -hmm. You know, your sales stuff. I read your book on sales. I attended an event. And there's, I don't think there's any better feeling in the world that when someone calls you up or, or you bump into them in the street, I walk down the street, People are like, you changed my life. You changed mm. my life. Thank you so much. You changed. I get it all the time, right, mm. Teddy? Like, I, everywhere we go, <laughs> you changed my life. And, th and honestly, I'm already rich. I, there's no better feeling <laughs> than that yeah. in the world. So I, I think as, mu as many lives as I've benefited by sales training and entrepreneurship, this is going to take the cake because this is this is for everyone. Mm -hmm. So like if you if you don't do if you don't follow the advice, shame on you. Like just like I don't know why you would unless you don't like money or you want to have nothing in your retirement account when you know when the time comes, which would kind of suck, mm. you know, because I don't think your social security is going to be enough to barely pay for your diapers when you're in a nursing yeah. home at some point, right? Like yeah. you need to secure your own financial future, especially like, the scarier the world is, the more important it is that you protect yourself, yeah, mm -hmm. right? And and when you're young, it's like God. I mean, like my I have a grandson. He's mm. he's um four months old. Oh, That's the first thing I did when he was yeah. born. I put money into into an exact Threw a book at him. This, no, yeah, no. <laughs> read this fucking book, yeah. right? Okay. No, the first thing I did was I opened up and my my daughter opened up an account, the exact type of account I talk about in the book, right? And I start off with putting ten thousand dollars into his account, and every month I put ten thousand dollars in. That's a good ten thousand a month, ten thousand a month, ten thousand a month, my ten thousand a month. Yeah. Every single he'll have like fifty million when it, or, or more. No, <laughs> seriously, like, like that's how much it will turn to if you wow. put that much money in when he's like thirty five. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So and 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 like if someone would have just told me this when I was twenty five years old or twenty two years old, fuck. I mean, like you know, I just I would have acted very differently with my savings. Now I'm lucky because I, I have a high income and I'm an entrepreneur, I have businesses I can sell, but still just to have that much money in an investment account that you just did, just because you had patience. Mm. Yeah. Is just like, my God, like, you know, just, you know, it would be amazing. Just imagine yourselves yeah. in 30 years from now and it's you're still for young patience. as hell. Yeah. And by the way, people are living longer yeah. and longer, yeah. right? So like, honestly, when you're fi you know, 50 right now is the new 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, you shouldn't have to worry whether you can get tickets at a low price every time you want to go see a show, especially when you're running out of time. Mm -hmm. I like to go to a, and I think you do too, a show last minute. Yes, me too. I what are we doing tonight? Not sure. Let's go see a show. I did it. Um, I didn't end up going into the game because there was too much traffic, but last minute I got birds tickets on um, game, game time. time. Yeah, last week. Oh, no like, shit. The same day. And how much were they? Uh, I don't know, but cheap as fuck. Cheaper than the I average. I don't remember because I was mad that I couldn't get in. Yeah, that was a crazy uh, little but stunt you I went. transferred, literally transferred them right from my phone to another person to, for a ticket for them to have for me since I couldn't go in. Seamlessly. Thank you, Game Time. Thank you, Game Time. So you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Plan Bree for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Plan Bree for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get back to the show. So what the hell? I mean, you'll be you'll still be vital. You're know, traveling the world, awesome. And the time you're sixty, you're still going to be young and just be rich as Croesus. So mm -hmm. like you know. Or you could just keep trying to speculate with the latest shit on TikTok or, yeah. uh, or like, you know, <laughs> scam, scam, scam shit, <laughs> right? And, and, and you know what? And that it, it's 
it's I think what the history of that stuff goes back to like the snake oil salesmen back in the in the wagon trains. Like it does, it's nonsense. It mm. doesn't work. Yeah. This works. Yeah. This actually works. This is like the closest thing. Uh, the closest thing I've had to this thus far is savings bonds. Yeah, but that's, that doesn't. The problem but that's savings all bonds. I got. <laughs> yeah. So well, really here's China. the problem with savings bonds: is they don't even keep up with inflation. Yeah. Right. So typically, you, you, the amount of interest you get in a savings bond, double E, whatever it might be, right, is um is just simply not going to get you where you want to go because when you have, let's say, it's a three percent or whatever the interest rate is. Okay, maybe it's a little bit higher now. It doesn't matter. It was lower. Still in the past, jack shit. Whatever it is, but but number one, you're not even keeping up with inflation. Mm-hmm. Number two, um, it's not compounding. You're not, it's not compounding every single year. And number three, compounding doesn't, even if it did compound, it doesn't work well at a low interest rate. Mm-hmm. So like there's a huge difference between when you're compounding at 11% a year or 4% a year. Yeah. One's gonna take forever. At 4%, it takes forever for it to really hit. At 11%, you're gonna hit in 20 years. It's gonna go boom, you mm. get that spike up where you're like, like how that. the hell did that, you look at your portfolio, like how the hell did that happen? Like. How do you have at five million dollars? I don't get it, and it's like a magic, but it's not magic. Mm-hmm. It's just math. It's yeah. just yeah. math, but it's like the sort of long term math, and you mm-hmm. just have to like you have to just everyone just please just retrain your your brain for this. Okay, it's just like you got to set it, forget it, make little contributions, and there's two or three things you want to be buying to make sure you're properly hedged. Okay, and unless the world implodes, and then it doesn't matter anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys are gonna end up with massive nest eggs when you're ready to retire. Fuck yeah! That's yeah. the advice in the book. Yeah, I'm that's like you don't want the wolf. The wolf because the wolf is very clever. A wolf is a clever investor. A wolf mm-hmm. is like survivor. The wolf knows exactly how to cut through and make the best of any situation. Like mm-hmm. so, like how do you make the best of like a corrupt market and you know and, and Wall Street fraud, mm-hmm. right? How, well, it's great. It's easy actually. You extract all the value they create and just let them, you know, let them play the suckers game themselves. So remember War Games that movie with Matthew Broderick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? You yeah. Know, like, do you want to play a game? Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, at the end of the whole thing, the computer comes up with one realization. It says, interesting game. The only way to win is not to play. <laughs> Crazy. The mm. only way to win on Wall Street is not to play that fucking game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is how you get to invest and get all the value and not play their game mm. of short-term trading and try to time the market. Mm-hmm. You do that, you end up beautifully. I'm in. Yeah, I'm I want to crack book. that thing open right, right now. No, wow. and, and it's funny as <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to read it. Promise. And it's like, uh, it's uh, you need that, especially if something that you don't know anything about, like mm-hmm. investing, so that you feel like you're like learning and having fun at the same time. I wrote it for young people, by the way. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I, listen, older people are going to read it as well. And they yeah, should. Of course. But I really wrote it, honestly, knowing that my audience is skews really young, mm-hmm. you know, um, and also the strategies that I that I lay out, it's the main strategy, it's like it's, it's really for people, teens, 20s, 30s. <laughs> This is like, it's like, I'm telling you, it's you, gold it's mine, like, it's yeah. gold mine for, for those people. Yeah. Um, as long as you're patient. Yeah. yeah. You know? Patience is a virtue. It is. That's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> as I, I was my mother, like, patience is a virtue. <laughs> if you like that, my dogs, you wake up and fleas. <laughs> That's, true. That's uh, true. Well, I have one last question. Is Do you think there's a common mistake that people make with investing that you yeah. could easily? The biggest mistake people make with investing is they, tr- they try to time the market. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it goes part and parcel with like trying to pick an individual stock, right? Human beings by their nature are terrible stock pickers. Mm-hmm. We just are like the way we're built our emotions. We, we sell when we should buy and buy when we should sell. Right? So, so try to pick an individual stock and time, like say, I'm going to buy it today and I want to wait till the earnings come out and then sell it after because I think earnings are going to beat expectations or whatever it might be, or there's mm-hmm. a great announcement coming out or that AI is hot now. Mm-hmm. I assure you that if you're buying artificial intelligence stocks because AI is hot, it's too late. Yeah, Time to buy them was before AI mm-hmm. got yeah. hot. Like mm-hmm. the fact that AI is hot has been, is now priced into all of these yeah. stocks. So like this idea that you're chasing the news of what's going on, it's like it's the most toxic dead mm-hmm. end strategy for investing. It's very fun for speculating. Mm -hmm. And like I say in the book, there's nothing wrong with that with a small amount of your money. But that's the big mistake. So the, and the reverse of that, what's the good side is long-term, it's called passive investing, meaning not trying to actively manage your money to beat the market. Mm -hmm. Let the market do the heavy lifting for you. Let the S&P, let the index committee pick all the great stocks and everyone has to chase those. You already own them. You didn't waste a second of your day worrying about it. And you didn't, if the stock, if your portfolio is down 10% when you, who cares? 
Mm-hmm. It'll be up 30% the next year and then down 8% up. You get it? Yeah. Over the long term, it will go higher. That's what history always tells us. Mm. Hell yeah. I needed that. Yeah. I mean, so here, so let, me, let me sign you a pen. Anyone got a pen? Oh, yes. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yes. Pens. Please. Tell me this pen. <laughs> Please sign these books for us. We won't, we won't sell them until we read it. Okay. So I'm going to sign each one. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was going to ask. I just didn't know how to ask. No, no. The best way is I just sign so you could sell it. If, if your name's not in it. Nice. Perfect. So, you. Go. All right. And by the way, it's a, it's number one on Amazon right now for investing oh in stocks. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah, congrats. All right. One for you. Thank, thank, oh, yeah. you. thank you. Guys, go so out. Yeah, you can get it right now on Amazon or bookstores. And I promise you it'll be the best investment you ever made. Even better than the one that's in the book. Yeah. I have mm-hmm. a book club. So this is the next book for the book club. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's funny as hell, by the way. Hell that's yeah. huge. I'm excited. Thank you so much for coming on. It, it my pleasure. You guys are awesome. And congratulations on all your success. Thank, thank you. you. I, love you. I love to see people in their 20s succeeding. It's great. Yeah. Oof. Hell yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, everybody. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching Plan Brie Uncut, guys. Make sure to watch all the rest of our videos. And make sure to click the link to subscribe. Don't click smash.